Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham meaning in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners. Scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful leg pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa. We're coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harvard Kakurash. And um, in this lesson, uh, what I want to go into is uh, this article here. Uh, entitled, um, Trump says he would deploy military if state officials can't contain protest violence. All right. And, uh, we've been speaking on these things while well, starting off with our elders and apostles, all right, of great millstone on down have been speaking on these things for decades, but now we're in the time as the scripture says, when the prophecies are speaking, man, let's go ahead and grab that real quick. All right, this is the book of Habakkuk chapter two, and we'll start at the top. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And that's what we are said to be, watchmen. All right. Now, a watchman would sit on the tower and he would give warning if an enemy was coming in or uh, anything uh, suspicious was happening or whatever the case may be. All right. The watchman would blow the trumpet if the enemy was coming and give an alarm to the people. So the same thing with us. All right. We see the enemy coming in. Okay, like it says in Isaiah 59 chapter, it talks about the enemy coming in like a flood. Well, we're blowing that trumpet. We're giving that a warm, uh, giving that alarm and uh, telling the people what they need to do to escape these coming calamities. And that's through what? Repentance. All right. Turning into Yahweh Shai to obtain mercy, because that's the only way that you can escape these uh, coming calamities is being um, is being found uh, worthy to escape these perils. All right. As it says in the book of Luke, the 21st chapter. All right, but this is uh in the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. But this is back in Habakkuk chapter two and verse two. It says, "And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that He may run that readeth it." And the way that we're doing this in uh, this time period is letting you know clearly what these prophecies are talking about, man. Okay, we've been letting uh, the people know that uh, martial law is going to be instituted. Troops are going to start coming in. They're going to take you out of their houses out of your houses, all right, throw you in these concentration camps, but now we're in the time where we see these things right at the door, and it's undeniable, man, all right, and now you, are, now it's clear who the true men of the Lord have been this whole time, warning you of these things, man, day in and day out, but let me continue on, verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, meaning these prophecies, all right, it was always a set time for these prophecies to come to pass, it says, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, and these prophecies are speaking, okay, these prophecies are speaking, the uproars of the people, the tumults of the people. That's prophesied, man. We'll grab that in Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. It says, though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And that's what we see happening, man. These prophecies are coming in quick. It's like you can't get a break. All right. Things aren't easing up. It seems, it seems like as soon as things seem to get a little bit more relaxed, uh, like it's almost in between the contraction, then all of a sudden, bam, more destruction comes, man. All right. The media going crazy over this. First, it was the coronavirus. And just within a week, the coronavirus is being swept under the floor or under the rug as if the, uh, we are in the midst of a pandemic. All right. Protesters everywhere. All right. If this if this pandemic, as brothers, have we been saying through the spirit and power, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, I know the uh, the big bro Yeshaya had mentioned it. But if this was a true uh, pandemic, as far as the coronavirus is concerned, then these hospitals within two weeks should be filled up, man. All right. These hospitals should be filled up. We should already be hitting the second wave with all the protests and the rioting going on. And, and nobody's social distancing All right, doing these protests, you know, but that's for another uh, uh, another, you know, lesson. Let me grab this in the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter before going into this article. Uh, second Ezra chapter nine. And we'll start at the top just to show you that. All right. These uproars are a part of the prophecies. These are a part of the uh, the visions. All right. That we read about in the book of uh, Habakkuk, the second chapter, second Ezra nine and one, he says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, being these prophecies, which I've told thee before, then thou then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Now, a lot of people aren't associating these riots and protests with the coming of the Messiah, with Yahweh Shah returning. But these are signs of the Lord returning, man. 
Okay, this is verse three. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, that's your riots, that's your protests, all right? Even people in Berlin, all right? People everywhere around the world are protesting over this event of, of this Jake getting shot and all types of other things that people are protesting over, man. But once again, it says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. And this is how Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai will receive all the honor, glory and praise because no other doctrine, no other philosophy, even people that believe in Jesus Christ, they aren't speaking on these prophecies, man. All right, because the true spirit of Yahweh Shai all right, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, all right, the true spirit of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, pursuing a revelation in the 19th chapter. And the spirit of prophecy isn't upon these people to where they don't understand these things and how it's associated with the Bible. All right, and they don't know what needs to be done to get covered, all right, from these calamities and be guided and protected through it. But the Wadi Yahweh Shai, Yah 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 for uh, blessing us to be able to see and hear these things and understand and know what time that we're in, man. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to this uh, this article. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a few minutes out of this clip. I'm going to jump around and then I'll make some commentary on it. All right, Lord's will through the spirit. This is edifying. All right, so this is Trump. Uh, President Trump, angry mobs cannot drown out peaceful protests. So he's addressing these protests and uh, how he's going to um, quell them. All right. Salakia. He will not have died in vain, but we cannot allow the righteous cries and peaceful protesters to be drowned out by an angry mob. The biggest victims of the rioting are peace-loving citizens in our poorest communities. And as their president, I will fight to keep them safe. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. But in recent days, our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters, Antifa, and others. A number of state and local governments have failed to take necessary action to safeguard their residents. Innocent people have been savage. Right. And I'll stop right there just to make a point, because he was saying how he wants to protect the people, save the innocent protesters and so on and so forth. So he's making it seem like he's doing you a favor. All right. Bringing in these troops and, and things of that nature. And we already know that this is in this devil's agenda. As the scripture says, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices because he brought in. He already activated over uh, or millions, uh, over a million, I believe, um, National Guard troops or reserve troops, if I'm not mistaken, for the whole coronavirus pandemic, right? But they weren't being used. But now with all these protests about, well, the the National Guard is already mobilized. And then he's talking about not only the National Guard getting involved even more, but then bringing in more military uh, troops, man. Okay, now the scriptures talk about this. All right, how does devil... All right, he acts like he's trying to help you out, do you a favor, how it's for your benefit. But in reality, he has ulterior motives, man. And now we're seeing clearly what his motives are by the agenda that he's pushing. This is the book of Psalms 55 and 21. It says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. And that's what he was speaking. Smooth words. All right. There's innocent people. All right. Who are being drowned out by looters, thugs, rioters. All right. Because later on in the clip, he mentions thugs. All right, you know that label is placed upon you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? So it's letting it be known who these troops are going to be sent for, it, man. All right, the target of these troops, all right, are going to be upon you Israelites because you're being demonized in the me media. Even though Esau is being caught doing these things, you're still being looked at as thugs, rioters, looters, all right? Which is going to lead into what? What the scriptures call the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Let's uh, let me finish this and grab that. This is the book of Psalms 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. So in his mind is war and his mind is bring destruction and his mind is fulfill the will of the elites, which is to depopulate. All right. 
to depopulate, starting off with you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. So let's grab the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, and we'll start at verse 5. Shit's getting real out here, man. All right. <laughs> it's not funny games anymore, man. And like we were speaking about speaking out on the line, you got Jake out here. They a hey, uh, Jake is out here. They're uh, stealing shoes. All right. I spoke with somebody. They said that uh, they were um, they had a friend that that uh, that came up on some air forces. All right. In the in the riots and things of that nature. Yes. Yeah, funny games. OK. Women out there protesting signs and whatnot. Well, it's not going to be funny games when those troops are right, are going to quell the violence and quelling that is by putting the people that are they perceive as creating the violence down and not with rubber bullets. That's when it's going to get serious, man. This is Jeremiah 30 and 5. For thus saith the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. And that's right. It says a voice of fear, not of peace, man. Because in the book of Ezekiel, the seventh chapter, all right, it says, well, I can just grab it real quick. Ezekiel chapter seven. These are the times that we're in, man. Ezekiel seven and verse um, five. It says, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh power and evil and only evil. Behold, is come. An end is come. The end is come. It watches for thee. Behold, it is come. Is it not the end? Did we not read about it in the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, the signs of the end, the return of our Messiah, Yahweh Shai? Matthew's the 24th chapter talks about these things as well. So we're in the end. And what is the Lord going to be doing in the end? Pouring out his fury. All right. He's going to use Esau, Edom, all right, to do these things as well as all right, uh, other things. You know, the scriptures talk about spirits created for vengeance, but the uh, the 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 tool all right, that the Lord is going to use chiefly is Esau Edom pursuant to the book of Psalms, the 17th chapter. Let me back up, back that up real quick and then get back to that. Jeremiah, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 17 and verse 13. It says, arise, O Lord, Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Right. So the wicked is the Lord's sword. And who's the wicked? This is the book of Malachi, chapter one and verse four. This is the, the tool that the Lord is going to use to mow down you, you rebellious Israelites, man. All right, because the Lord is about to start unleashing on you, Jakes, for your rebellion and not repenting, man. This is Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom saith we are impoverished, Esau, Esau Edom is a so-called white man, the biblical Edomites, all right? So Edom, all right, or the so-called white man, whereas Edom saith we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. So everything that Esau Edom has built up, is in the process of being thrown down as we speak, man. Yahweh Shai said, he said, I saw Satan come uh, uh, come down from heaven like lightning, man. Roughly paraphrasing. So this devil is going down like that, man. This is quick. It says, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. Who's the them? The Edomites. And the people, plural, all right? So it's not just talking about Esau, the individual himself, the forefather of the Edomites. No, it's talking about the whole nation. So it says the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So even though the Lord is using you to execute judgment upon our people, like it talks about in the book of Isaiah, the 10th chapter, the fifth and sixth verse, man, how, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, the staff in thine hand is mine indignation. All right. The modern day Assyrian Assyrians is Esau Edom. And he's going to be used to be sent into a hypocritical nation, which is talking about you Israelites, man. All right. He's going to be given the charge to take the spoil, to take the prey, to tread you down in the streets. This is the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. But even though he's being used, all right, the Lord is going to turn around and punish him as well, man. But right now it's the time for you, Jake's, all right, to pay up, man. All right, like the Spirit's been uh, having me say because uh, uh, Apostle, um, which uh, stuck with me with uh, one of Apostle Rakaz's lesson, hey, it's time to pay up. Jake, it's time to pay for your iniquities, for the lifestyle that you live. All right, the, the sins that you've committed, if you haven't repented, well, this is the time where the Lord is going to judge you according to those things, man. Like it says back in that Ezekiel 7 and verse, um, uh, I'll keep reading Ezekiel 7 and verse 7. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time has come. The day of trouble is near and not the sound again of the mountains, right? The day of trouble is near. We just read about. Oh, I didn't finish it, but we'll get back to it in the book of Jeremiah, the 30th, the 30th chapter. It says the time of Jacob's trouble. So it's near, man. So what's going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble? All right. It says 
And the time has come, the day of trouble is near, and the and not the sounding again of the mountains. Verse 8, now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish mine anger upon thee. So the Lord is about to uh, accomplish his anger upon our people through the great wrath that he's going to put upon these devils to come down with, man. It says, and I will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. So this is what's happening, man. The recompense for your wickedness, verse nine, and mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shadat Smita. So that's right, man. So these jakes that are going to get mowed down, they are innocent. They're being recompensed according to their abominations, according to their wickedness, man. Nobody perish being innocent, like it says in the book of Job, man, four and seven, I believe. But this is back in Jeremiah chapter 30 and uh, six says, ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hand on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Right, so Jacob is in trouble, and the he that's going to be saved out of it is the elect of the nation of Israel, those that turn from transgressions within Jacob, those that repent and turn from their iniquities within the 12 tribes of Israel. You have an opportunity to escape these coming calamities, man. Like Yahweh I said, lest ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And two-thirds of our people here in this land, they aren't going to repent, so therefore, they're going to perish, man. Whether it be through martial law troops, natural disasters, Okay, uh, wild beasts tearing them to pieces. This is all written in the scriptures. The famine, all right, dying of starvation, okay? Children eating via cannibalism. All these things are written in the scriptures. It says in the book of Ezekiel, the second chapter, it says written within and without is lamentation, mourning, and woe. And through what we're seeing being put down in legislation, all right, the rhetoric of these politicians, the mindset of Esau, Edom, we see that we're at, those at that time where the Lord is about to pour out his fury upon our people. And not just our people, it's going to be upon the whole world, man. Let me back that up and get back to that clip. All right, because, of course, the focus is our people, but great wrath is coming upon the whole world, man, via this devil. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So this is great wrath, man. Sending these troops in. When they come in, they are not going to spare because that's the charge that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has given these troops. They're going to have a spirit upon them of no mercy, not caring. They don't care if you got a sign. They don't care if you're crying. I'm tired of dying. I'm tired. They don't care about that. They're just going to lay you down, man. They're just going to put you down, put you to death. All right. And if you're wise, you wouldn't even be involved in these protests and these riots, man. Okay. But. You know, our people are going to do what they're going to do, man, and fulfill their lot. So let me get back. Um, let me see. Did I finish? Just make sure I finish uh, these precepts I started off with. All right. Yeah. So let's go back to this clip. I'm going to jump a little bit ahead. It's lucky. Let me turn the light on here in the whip. All right. Uh, let's see. 255. All right, back to uh... always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. First, we are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. Right. So here goes Trump saying, hey, 
If you can't quell this violence, if you can't get your cities back to normal, then I'm sending in the troops to quell the violence, man. These troops are going to go in these crowds and it's going to come to a point where they're just going to start unleashing these bullets, man. Unleash the whole clip on Jake, man. And have no mor no remorse, no pity, no nothing. And a lot of these things are going to be caught on camera. It's going to put Jake even in a more uproar. But they ain't going to have no strength against this devil, man. All right? They will have no strength against this devil in this time period, man. Because once again, this is the wrath of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Not saying that these some of these troops aren't going to get killed and murdered or whatever the case may be. But really, it's going to be an onslaught upon uh, Jacob, man. Hey, the scriptures say in the book of 2nd Ezra how our people are led as a, as a flock to the slaughter, man. All right? This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and verse uh, 10. It says, behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. So just groups, thousands of Jake being led to death, man. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. All right. And this is speaking of the modern day Egypt because the Lord is going to deliver, send his angels throughout the four corners of the earth to deliver his elect. Right. Matthew's the 24 chapter speaks on that. But I just wanted to grab that point on that scripture. Let's go back. Salakia. Act up. Quickly solve the problem for them. I am also taking swift and decisive action to protect our great capital, Washington, D.C. What happened in this city last night was a total disgrace. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers to stop the rioting, looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. We are putting everybody on warning. Our 7 o'clock curfew will be strictly enforced. Those who threaten innocent life and property will be arrested, detained, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I want the organizers of this terror to be on notice that you will face severe criminal penalties and lengthy sentences in jail. This includes Antifa and others who are leading instigators of this violence. All right, and that's all I'll get on that clip, man. You know, but you heard him uh, mention, all right, uh, different um, laws that are being put down or enforced, curfews, okay, things of that nature, man taking more of your rights away hey that's all in the scriptures man all right let me grab this in the book of revelation chapter 13 and verse 11 it says and i beheld another beast coming out of the earth now this beast is speaking of america it says and he had two horns like a lamb all right those two horns representative for republicans and democrats just like in the uh, ancient roman empire or right, right, during the uh, roman empire you had the plebeians and the patricians two two uh, uh party systems man Right. It says, and he had two horns like a lamb. Right. So the lamb, that's a, a peaceful animal. So you got your two party si systems that make it seem like you have a choice, like you have a decision. You got your left wing, your right wing. Hey, well, it's the left wing and the right wing. But what? It's the same bird. So it's an agenda that both sides are playing into, man. OK, it's just an illusion of uh, freedom, an illusion of choice. It says, and that's being made clear now by how easily they're taking, stripping your rights away and they're justifying it through these, these bullshit ass uh, false flags and, and things of that nature, man. Okay. But it says Revelation 13 and 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon, right? This is him speaking as a dragon. This is him putting a draconian law, legislation, all right? Severe law. OK, he said that, hey, these these uh, looters or whatever the case may be, these protesters that are uh, that are causing violence, they'll be charged to the uh, the greatest extent, man. OK, whatever, however he worded it in that last part of that clip, man. OK. It's going to be a time. It's going to be a time where they get that order, man. Hey, shoot on sight. This is the times that we're in, man. And it's all prophesied in the Bible. So call her law. la ya by shim Yahweh shai, man. Our Lord gets all the honor, glory, the praise, man. He revealed these things unto us. He spoke these things unto existence from the beginning of time. And now he's executing these things, man. Okay.
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to grab one more, not even on this clip, but I'm going to jump down and actually read a little bit of this article and then end it off with like a few precepts. Okay. Uh, second Ezra's or Salaki. I'm, I'm looking for the, the paragraph. <laughs> Let me see where it's at. Okay, let's read this. It says the domestic, the domestic deployment of our armed force services is an incredibly serious undertaking that should not be taken lightly. And that's right, because these things are only going to escalate, man. And you got Jake that's out here, and they're taking these things very lightly. All right, they really they they up in these police officers' faces spitting. All right talking shit pushing them and the and these officers they got to order majority of the time to uh, uh to stand down so they pissed off jake doing whatever the hell they want shoving them throwing rocks at them whatever hey they're gonna get pissed off as soon once again as soon as they get that go ahead through the spirit and power y'all by shimmy i was when the lord puts the spirit on these devils and he's like all right time's up let it loose okay when that time comes, man, once again, it's going to get real. Jake ain't going to be bullshitting, playing around no more. All right. You ain't going to be able to just spit in the police officer's face. All right. And, and, and get away with it, man. All right. You know, I've been seeing all types of clips. Hey, I've been seeing police officers getting dragged. And it's a beautiful thing because this is all according to prophecy. But let me get to the point, man, by hitting this scripture. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 21 and 8. It says, again, the word of the Lord, Yahweh came unto me, saying, son of man, prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, say a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. All right, that sword all right, is being prepared. Troops prepared, National Guard prepared, ready to go, ready for the command, already in your major cities, already mobilized months ago, man. All right. As a matter of fact, I, had to, I spoke to someone earlier today and they said that the National Guard, they here in Des Moines, uh, there's a curfew at nine o'clock and um, they shut down the Walmarts all at five o'clock. Major a lot of businesses shut down at five o'clock as well. Some at six or right, six o'clock. But here it is. They shut down the Walmarts at five o'clock. But the National Guard is at the Walmarts, according to the information that I received. Uh, uh, someone had texted me, said, hey, the National Guard uh, is in Walmart. OK, what do you think is going to happen? Those Walmarts are going to turn into uh, concentration camps. You're going to have to go there to get your food. They're going to ration out the food. OK, if there's any issues, you got them troops there with guns. OK, for when the lack of bread, the, uh, uh, the, the famine is in play, they're going to be distributing those the food. I can see it now, man. However, the Lord has it, uh, the details planned out. You know, we know what's going to occur according to the prophecy, but some intricacies and details, some of those things is uh, not given unto us. But now we're seeing it played out. But I can see these troops. Hey, you got the uh, the vaccine? Oh, well, sir, you can't you can't come to the store. You can't come here. Well, we got a vaccine station right here. You can get your vaccine right now. Bam. Then comes the chip. Oh, you got your RFID chip? Sir, we got to take you to get your chip. We got a chipping station right here in the Walmart. We can get you chipped right now. Then you can get your food. All right. Go back to your uh, family and make sure that they're taken care of, man. This is what's being put into play. All right. This is back in Ezekiel 21 and uh, none and none. <laughs> Salakia. Ezekiel 21 and nine. Son of man, prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Say a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. And this is what we've been prophesying. This is the word of the Lord. We've been telling you that. Uh, 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 judgment is coming, man. Troops are coming in. All right. Death is being prepared. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. So these troops that have been preparing, that are already mobilized, they're going to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth right? So should you be partying and bullshitting? Should Jake be in this happy go lucky spirit? No. Jake needs to take the judgment of the Lord seriously, man. Jake needs to fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. And the Lord is going to send that fear upon him through these calamities. It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. And he hath given it to be furbished that it may be handled. The sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. And there you go right there, man. So, hey, bodies is going to start hitting the floor very soon. All right. Back to the article. It says the domestic deployment of our armed service is an incredibly serious undertaking that should not be taken lightly. Smith said we live in a democracy, not a dictatorship. And that's what's being shown now. This is a dic dictatorship. All right. This is a takeover, man. Ain't no democracy. Ain't no rights. They're going to take away. Yo, yo, you ain't going to be able to sue the police. 
All right. When you get thrown down on the ground and you start bleeding off and sue you guys, no, they're going to cast the judgment right then and there, man. All right. Judgment is going to be executed. Firing squads, man. Jake lined up. All right. Lined up being put down, man. OK. Guillotines. This is all this is all what's coming, man. OK. Jake playing around, playing around with a salvation. But this is coming to the doors. It says, seek you the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Serve now the creator in the days of thy youth before the evil days draw nigh. We are at the door of the evil days, man. So this isn't the time to be bullshitting and taking the Lord uh, 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 as a joke, as a game, as these prophecies for uh, uh, as a uh, as a game, man. It says um, he added urging Trump to use the powers of the presidency to calm tensions across the country, not escalate them. And Trump's on his high horse. He's like, man, hey, fuck all that, man. I don't care. Put him down. That's his rhetoric. That's his mentality. And he even mentions it uh, 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 in this article, man. Let me uh, find it. Uh, let me see. Salakia, let me, uh, maybe it was up a little bit further. Because right, pretty much he was, he was uh, uh, telling all these governors that they're soft, they're weak, all right? They aren't using enough force. Pretty much he's like, I don't understand why you nigga, why you uh, 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 governors aren't giving them the order to start just killing these rioters, these looters, man. That's essentially what he's saying. All right. Uh, where is it? At? I really want to grab this point. Just bear with me. It's not giving the courtesy call. All right, I might just skip it. Okay, uh, this is the Insurrection Act. Okay, yeah. I'll just leave it in the uh, the description box, though. If brothers want to um, actually go back and uh, check check the article. Okay, here it goes. The Wadi Yab Hashem All right, so it says, uh, Trump's remarks came hours after he urged the nation's governors to get tough. With unruly demonstrators, most of you are weak, he told them, according to audio of the call obtained by NBC News. Ye, you have to dominate. If you don't dominate, you're wasting your time. They're going to run over you. You're going to look like a bunch of jerks, the president said. So there it goes right there. He's like, hey, you niggas need to get tough, man. Y'all weak. All right. Y'all letting them run over y'all, spit in your face. OK, lay them out. Put them down. Trump is like, hey, get it cracking, man. And that's the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai that's upon these devils, man. All right, to execute that judgment upon Jake. So let's go ahead and end it off with this uh, Second Ezra 16. Second Ezra 16 and verse 68. It says, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And that's these troops, man. And they shall take away certain of you. So they're going to take you out of your houses. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if, hey, uh, uh, with all this footage on these, uh, uh, all the footage on these riots and protests. If troops start going to people's houses, sir, were you involved in the protests? We got footage of you doing this. Take you out of your house. You're getting charged. You're getting thrown in jail. Okay. People are going to get taken out of their houses, taken to concentration camps, all types of madness, man. So it says, uh, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. Now, the way that this is going to manifest in this present time is how they're going to take Jake into these concentration camps. All right. And they're going to try and force uh, uh, force them to get the chip. All right. They might try and do a uh, uh, forced vaccinations. But the end all be all is to ultimately force Jake to get the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, man. And if you get that mark of the beast, no matter if they try and force you. OK, you don't resist. All right. Unto blood. If you don't resist that and you take that chip, man. Fire and brimstone for that ass, man. Revelation, the 14th chapter, man. All right. Tells you the judgment of what's to befall you if you take the RFID chip. So that's why it's important for us to have faith and call upon you. How about Shimia was shot to deliver us out of these calamities, man. OK. Hey, because it doesn't matter what Esau is. As a matter of fact, let me grab a, a, a preset, man, because you don't want to fear what Esau can do. You want to fear what Yahweh about Shimia was shot can do to you, man. This is the book of uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse uh, 28. It says, and fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So that's right, man. Esau is going to be threatening Jake, just like he did in uh, with the Maccabees brothers. 
hey man, I'll, I'll, uh, we're going to scalp you, we're going to bo- bo- boil you, whatever, whatever, hey man, all that shit, whatever, man. Do what you got to do, all right? Yah Bashim Yah is our defense. He can intervene and deliver us with divine intervention, hey, or we just suffer what we got to suffer and be raised up first, get spiritual power and so on and so forth. The end all be all is to fear Yah Bashim Yah Washai, and we have, to, we have to prove that. And that's what Abraham, uh, that's what um, the, uh, the Lord said to Abraham when he was getting ready to sacrifice Isaac. The Lord says, surely I know that thou fears me. So we have to show forth that truly we fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man, over everything, man. So we're going to be brought to the test. We're going to be brought to the limits, man. But our faith is going to prevail. As it says in the book of Sirach, the 36th chapter, it says, let thy prophets be found faithful. The elect is going to be found faithful, man. Okay. So let's uh, go back. Second Ezra 16 and verse um, 69. And they that consent unto them. Right. So you take the chip, you cave in. Fuck it. All right, I'll get it. it. Says they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and and and, and reproach and trodden underfoot. Because that's right. You might have felt like you escaped Esau's judgment, but you ain't escaped the judgment of Yahweh by Shimei Abishai. Okay. Yeah, you might have the chip open a few doors for a few days, and then bam. All right, Esau goes and and, and turns his back on you, man. Your ass still can't eat. Fed you for two days. Now your ass can't eat. Okay. Whatever he does, man. Hey, either way, hey, that the nukes is coming. And that's a horrifying death, man. Hey, the scripture say in the book of Revelation, it says how they do hurt. All right. <laughs> I believe uh yeah, I believe it just says uh they do hurt. As a matter of fact, let me just let me just confirm that. <laughs> it was going, I know it uh, goes into the missiles, but it talks about how they hurt. So this is a pain that you don't want to feel. This is the book of Revelation, chapter nine. In verse 19, it says, for their power is in their mouth, right? And in and, and in their tails. So this is uh, describing, this is going into the actual missiles. It says their power is in their mouth because the warhead, all right, that's where all the power comes from. All right, the warhead is in the, t uh, the tip of those missiles, man, and the top of those missiles. So it says the power is in their mouth and in their tails, right? You got the uh, uh, propulsion, is that the word? All right, the propulsion uh, to, to, to guide the missiles through the air and so on and so forth. The tail of it. It says, for their tails were like unto serpents and, and had heads and with them they do hurt. And that's right, man. So these missiles, hey, <laughs> that's going to be some pain for your ass, man. You know? So even that alone should keep us to be like, yeah, yeah, you saw you talking all this smack. But uh, you ain't got nothing on what the Lord can do, you know? And even showing that faith and fidelity, man, the Lord can have it to where you don't feel nothing, man, or you just get delivered. Trans, hey, it's it's time, it's time to have big faith, and the Lord is gonna uh, move on that faith, man. But let me get back, you know, to the point. Back in Second uh, Ezra, chapter sixteen, and verse uh, sixty-nine, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. That insurrection is an uprising, right? And we see an uprising and it's towards you, Jake's man. These troops are coming in. Verse uh, 71. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. And this is what's going to happen, man. Okay. Judgment is coming. Let me end it off with this. Jeremiah the 18 chapter. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse... 21, it says, therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows and let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. This is going to befall you, Jakes, man. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans that don't repent. All right, it says all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say their evil, the evil shall not overtake nor, nor prevent us. That's the book of uh, Amos, the ninth chapter. Of course, we all have sinned. We've all come short of the glory of Yah by Shem Yahweh Shai. But through the spirit of the Lord that came upon us, we repent. OK, we turn from those iniquities and through repentance, through turning to Yah by Shem Yahweh Shai, we'll receive mercy. The sure mercies of David, like it talks about in the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, it says, Verse uh, 22, let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them, for they have digged a pit to take me and hid snares for my feet. So, right, these troops are going to come in. Right now, they're going to come into these protests and to these riots. But next, they're going to be at your door. 
All right. They're going to bring all right the riot to you. All right. They're going to bring the protest to you. OK. So, you know, I just wanted to man go into that man through the spirit. All right. Prophecies are speaking loud and clear. With that being said, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakudash, the honors to the elders and apostles, the great millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.